Hey guys, this is Hinny. Today I'm going to talk about my Aero Sets Up Road Bike, Giant Propel Advanced. So, we start from the handlebar. This is a 320 millimeters wide handlebar made by Fourier's autonomous brand in made in China. Uh, E to C 32 centimeters and you can see my hood are slightly bent in um, the distance between the two hoods are 22 centimeters apart this is a fairly aero position for a road racing bike and it's easy allego uh, you need a lot of core work and specific workout for the arms to go into a position like this and you are pretty narrow and arrow. There's uh, also a lot of core strength in need to, to hold for that position. Current CDA for the position is 0 0.17, 0 0.18, depends how, how flexible the day. And the stem, it's a giant contact as well. It's an OD2 140 millimeter stem negative 17 degrees and, and it goes on to the giant OD2 stereo tubes perfectly uh, you can see I'm not using the original one piece cockpit it's not one piece it's uh, the the fully internal integrated cockpit uh, where all the cables could be hidden and now you see I'm also running a mechanical Altegra grip set so there's four cable going down this frame and there's a drawbacks uh, there's a big hole on the top tube rain water could go into it but uh, I have minimal corrosion from the uh, rain water with the cable so it is fine it's uh, more about the, the look now I move on to the saddle the saddle it's a prologo time trial saddle it's uh, carbon rails it's uh, actually the stock saddle comes with the Cervelo P5. It has a wide nose and relatively short nose as well. I have uh, numerous saddles going onto this bike and tested a lot of time and this is the one I ended up with, which is uh, pretty fine. Moving on to the bottle cage, you can see I'm using an Elite Chrono CX Aerodynamic water bottle system on the front and featuring a round bottle cage from Elite and a large round bottle on the back. Uh, you can see the Giant Propel has a really big down tube and it's a cam tail design so the air it's quite uh, going round the, the bottle and then it's uh, going through the bigger bottles on the back. It's uh, the advantage actually is quite minimal. I think I gain like five watts from this setup when I'm traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. Moving on to the chain set, um, I'm using an XKD power meter, it's a Chinese brand. These crank arms are aluminum and the axle is titanium. They are both CNC machined in Taiwan and this is a Chinese brand, so the XKD you can order online or order at our clubhouse. Uh, you can see the chain ring is pretty big and it's silver. It's a fancy one from Allo Gear. It's a 56T outer ring. Uh, it's a Germany brand. You can visit their website. I'll post a link down below. Uh, the small chain ring is from Stone. It's also a one by chain ring and it's a 38. And you can see I'm using a chain catcher here just in case the two one by chain rings uh, has a chain drop but luckily I never had any. Moving on to the back I'm using a 1130 Otero cassette uh, because it's uh, it's quite heavy but uh, it goes perfectly with the 56T setup. Um, most of the terrain uh, we will race in Hong Kong like the Bright's Pool, the, the Tianyang Road. Uh, it's perfectly fine. There's no steep climb in, in Hong Kong. So 56 with the 30 cassette is, uh, is perfect. 
about the pulley system, I'm using uh, Aero pulleys from Stone, 12T on top and 14T at the bottom. Uh, fairly bigger efficiency. It's uh, easy to change, replace, and the bearings are smooth. This is like a tiniest upgrade that I could I could spend on the bike. And I'm using a Redshift direct mount uh, dropout for Shimano derailleurs. It's uh, it's stronger than the original one, and it's uh, easier for the uh, wheel change to take place. And it's also making the shifting a little bit smoother. I'm using a KMC Golden Chain, which is a X11SL standard, nothing special. Now moving on to the rotors. It's a 140 millimeters MT900. Is MT900 not RT900? They have like minimal weight advantage, and heat dissipates fast for me because I'm only 60 kilograms. Now moving on to the paddles. I am using a Wahoo Speedplay Aero paddles, uh, single side clipped. Uh, they are shaped perfectly with the cleat. So uh, minimal aerodynamics, probably gain like two watts from 50 kilometers per hour. So it's more about the psychological gains. Uh, they also has like a much higher cornering limit if you could lean your bike that low but still look nice too now moving on to the wheel set the wheel set of this bike is actually the biggest upgrade for for itself um, it's a wheel set that we sell at Dakar clubhouse i configured these specs for for myself so uh, you can see this rim a lot these years it's a triple layer carbon rim they are holeless, tubeless, and you could put clincher tires into it. Uh, it's 21 millimeters of internal width and 26 millimeters of external width. They are steady and aero enough. Uh, this is a 24 spokes version, and I am using a Victoria Corsa Speed tubeless tire on them. Uh, one big feature of this, of this wheel set, uh, they are using standard straight pull hubs. So this one is the DT240S version. Uh, carbon spokes on this one, so they are sitting at 1,320 grams for a pair of 60 millimeters wheel sets, which is um, light enough for me. Uh, but for this setup, I am not using tubeless for these tubeless tires. I have a TPU tube inside. Uh, one big reason for that is that the, the tire walls of these generations of Corsa Speed is really soft and they don't sit well on the rim bed. So the, the go-to method is you put more rim tape on it tubeless tape uh, we have put like four to five layers to just let the tire sit well on the rim bed but it's kind of ridiculous because my rim is holeless so I just get rid of all the tapes and then I just put an inner tube in it it's pretty light it's no sealant inside no extra tape inside the the TPU tube is like 36 grams each. Uh, I have like increase in rolling resistance, probably losing like uh, 8 watts at 50 kilometers per hour, which is like minimal. I've never lose a race because I am like 6 watts in shorts. Uh, moving on to the head unit, this is a SRM PC8. Uh, most feature of the most popular head units like Garmin, Wahoo, uh, I don't need them. And this one, the SRM, they have a really long battery life. Uh, for my training days now, I could charge them once a week and it's perfectly fine. It's an analog 
black and white screen, uh, which is like super easy to, to read data on it. Um, this is the, the bike. Le now, let's move on to how this bike actually rides. Uh, first thing I noticed after getting this bike, uh, it has a really agile front end. Its uh, pointiness and handling is exceptional. It goes where you point to. It's minimal adverse you need to input uh, to correct or adjust the inputs inside of a corner. This is, uh, I, I really didn't expect this. I just thought this is a, a bargain price bike, aero bike from a big brand. That's it. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, it, it handles, it handles really well. And as you can see, this bike, it has a near horizontal top tube and a relatively high chain stay. Uh, it has a slow tail. The tail reaction from this bike is quite delayed. Uh, it quite requires some more inputs from the riders. Uh, you have to do like bigger leverage uh, side, by side to side efforts. Uh, when you try to accelerate out of the saddle uh, or try to do sprint but uh, this is not a disadvantage of the bike this is more like a characteristic of uh, every bike with similar geometry uh, it's a uh, mid-level aero bike uh, below 30,000 Hong Kong dollars when it's new uh, I did like put some value added parts onto it, but it's fairly reasonable priced for a race bike. Uh, the new Giant Propel is out, 2023 version, but it's certainly arriving like next year, still a couple months to go. Uh, if you like, like if there's something that I missed about the Giant Propel, please, please comment or, or message me. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe to my channel, share to your friends. This is it. This is the review of my aero bike giant Propel Advanced Pro 1 2021. Thanks for watching.